Number three, wherever gold goes, it adds value to itself and its environment. For example, as we sit here, if we put a bar of gold on this table, all of a sudden the equation, all the tables are not the same anymore. True or false? The table, this table becomes <laughs> the golden table. It adds value to the table and itself is value. With time, gold becomes more valuable. So two things there. If, you are going, if God is going to use you for honor, you must be a man of value. Somebody who is constantly adding value to yourself. And, and that is one of the biggest challenges as you grow. Because sometimes you assume uh, now you have so much knowledge. But in order to succeed, I have found out that you must learn, relearn, and unlearn. You must learn, relearn, and unlearn. Because if you, if, if you, were, if, if you were a secretary, and when you went to school, you, you were using typewriter to type, you must unlearn. Because now, even the keyboard is gone. Now you are typing on what? On, on the screen. And you don't hear any ta 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 and then you slap. You remember those days? They type ta 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 they slap pa and then they check the bobby. Ta 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 they slap pa Which part of the tablet are you going to slap? So to so you observe that the the secretaries that could not evolve, the young ones came and took their place. And they started complaining. I've served with this company for 35 years. All of a sudden, they called me and said, some new machine has come. I cannot operate it. Every day I'm making mistakes. I am making mistakes. So they brought a young girl there. This world is not fair. <laughs> I've served them with all my tears. Look at it. Now that the company is growing. No, you didn't relearn. You didn't unlearn. So in order, to, in order for you to walk with God, you must continuously learn, relearn, and unlearn. That's the gold. It is precious because it has value. And the way you add value to yourself is by reading. If you stand on the shoulders of the giants, you will be taller than them. Reading. All of us, as life becomes busy, it's more difficult to read. We now have more books on our tablets than the whole Ghana former Ghana library but we seldom read it truth be told but if we are going to move to the next dimension and want God to use that we must widen our horizon we must read broad so that when God is talking to us God cannot use you above your level of competence God cannot use you above your level of what? Everybody will only rise to their level of competence. After that, they begin to fail. You can only rise to your level of competence. After that, if you don't retool yourself and equip yourself, you begin to come down. That is why you can have a leader who will do so well and later on fail. Because he's risen to his level of what? Competence. And at that level, he needs to now up his game in order to move to the next dimension. If he doesn't, all the gains, you will lose it. So you must continuously, consistently add value to yourself. If you are going, God is going to use you. If you want God to use you, you must continuously add value to yourself. You know, why was it, why, why did God use Paul to write most of the books? Because he was educated. Paul wrote about Concepts that no other disciples who sat under the feet of Jesus could write on because he's been trained by Gamaliel and he has he's attended all the sophisticated schools of, uh, of, of the Pharisees. He understood the Torah better than all of them. So God could use him to write so many books. So what you present to God is what God will use. So if you want God to use you at the gold dimension, present yourself as gold. If you want him to use you at the silver dimension, present yourself as silver. And the wood, present yourself. Then the next thing you see is that, we said God add value to wherever it goes. And va add value to where, anywhere you find yourself, that's your presence makes the place better. 
Because Jesus said, "Ye are the light of the world. Gold sparkles. Wood does not. Clay does not. But silver and gold, when they come in contact with the light, they sparkle. That's why Jesus said, "You are the light of the world. The question is, wherever you find yourself, what value do you bring on board? What is so unique, unique about you that heaven needs to take you? Apart from Jesus dying for us. You must, anywhere you find yourself, your presence must add value to the place. And when your presence adds value to the place, whether in the economic sphere, in the, in the, in the political sphere, the system will, cannot do without you. You know, when Daniel, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar came to power, he retired Daniel and brought young counselors and Chaldeans and magicians. So Daniel went on retirement. But the day he saw the finger right and he became frightened. And the Bible says his leg began to wobble. He called the mother and the mother said, you have retired the gold on your board. He said, there is a man in the kingdom. He was your father's chief advisor. When you came, you retired him. Go and look for him. He will, there is no secret that he cannot tell you about. Because of the value that Daniel brings on board, the guy had no option than to go and look for him. And they brought him. And when they brought him, the problem was solved. And amazingly, he had his promotion, but the guy died the next night. When you function at the level of gold, the beauty is that fire doesn't kill you. That was the mistake of Nebuchadnezzar when he put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abegno in the fire. He didn't know they were gold. So when they came out, they came purer. If you function at the level of gold, what is supposed to kill you will make you better. So it becomes difficult for the devil even to handle you. One day, there was this joke that the devil met. And they didn't know what to do with Paul. They said, let's beat him. And then when they said, let's beat him, the devil said, hey. The man says, every suffering he suffers, it is gain. So another demon said, let's kill him. He said, hey, are you crazy? How do we kill him? He says, to die is gain. Then another demon said, oh, now let us make him live. Then the devil said, what do you mean? He says, Paul says, to live is for Christ. Then the meeting became confused. They did not know whether to kill him or to leave him alive. Because the man said, to live is for Christ, to die is gain. And he was confused. So they said, okay, let's leave him. We will shipwreck him. <laughs> we will stone him. And when the time comes for his master to take him, let him go. Because, you see, adversity at the gold level makes you better. Adversity at the gold level makes you better. So you will see that all the challenges that Paul went through, God knew that because Paul was functioning at the gold level, he would not break. But he will be better. That is why when the disciples were telling him not to even go through the adversity, when Agabus came and told him that the one going, they would tie him and all that, he was just looking at them. He said, you don't understand my substance, what I am made of. If God is going to use us in our nation, we must be able to take pressure. And the last thing I share about gold is that it is pure. The devil, Jesus said, the devil cometh, but he has nothing in me. If we eat the devil's food, when he comes... He will have something in us. If we eat the devil's food, when he comes, he will have something in us. Gold is pure. That is actually what gives it value. And if we are going to be used, even in the business sphere, I'm telling you, the, 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 the unbelievers, with all their crooks and everything, when they see a genuine businessman, they know. And they would like to work with you. How come all of a sudden, now corporate governance have become a thing? But our Bible is corporate governance. If you study the Bible, you don't need to learn corporate governance. Everything about corporate governance, ethics and everything, is in the Bible there. 
He said, and, and by virtue of the Holy Spirit, we can even take it to a higher level. They can never take it. And that is where we need the Holy Spirit. And the issue is that you can start as wood, but you can become gold. That is the beauty. God has given us the opportunity to become anything. You know, if you look at God's creation, the lion is born strong. The elephant is born brave. The elephant is born strong. Okay? The crocodile is born fearful. But man is the only one with the ability to be any of them. Man can be strong. Stronger than the lion. Fearsome than the crocodile. Mightier than the elephant. We can become anything God wants us to become and we even decide to become. That is the power God has put in our hands. So even though you may be at the wooden level, from now, you should assess yourself. Look at yourself and honestly tell yourself. Assess yourself and give yourself an honest assessment. Whether you are wood, whether you are gold, are you able to take pressure? If they, they put you under pressure, what happens to you? Do you rebel? Do you say, uh, uh, me, I don't like pressure. Oh. Me, I don't like pressure. Me, I don't like pressure work. Then God can't use you. God cannot use you. No, 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 no. For three or four days, no, stop, I've been speaking. It takes pressure. God, if you don't, so if you have that saying, if Mr. President gives you work or you have anything, so me, I don't like pressure. No, 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 then... We, we, we agree you are, you are wood. We will keep you at the wood level. No problem. Because the wood, when you hit it with pressure, blah, what happens? It breaks. So when pressure breaks you, they know you are wood. When we put wood in fire, it burns into ashes and it is irreversible. So check yourself. When you go through crisis, do you come better or bitter? When you go through crisis, do you come out better or bitter if you come up better you are good if you come up bitter then you have to check yourself clay cannot take pressure if you look at clay it is easy to hide crack in clay clayware but you cannot hide crack in goldware the word sincere as i come to uh, please let me know my time will uh, say <laughs> the word sincere is actually a word taken from the poetry industry, the Asian poetry industry. You know, when you are molding a gold bar and there is a problem and there is dirt or anything, you will see it. You cannot polish it and leave it because you don't paint gold. <laughs> Do you paint gold? You don't paint a gold, a gold uh, 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 vessel, but you can paint a clay vessel. So what they normally do with, um, when they mold a, a, a clay vessel, let's say this clay vessel, in the olden days, and there is a crack in it, what they do is that they will take wax and push the wax into the crack. And then after pushing the wax into the crack, then you begin to rub it. And when you rub it, nobody sees it. It rather shines nicer. Okay, and then you, whatever you want to do, you paint it. So now, what happens, an experienced merchant who buy clay work, what he does is that, whenever he picks a clay work, he will ask the potter to put on fire. And then when they put the fire on, he will put the clay work on the fire. If there is any wax, the wax will run and everybody sees the crack so if there is no wax then the the merchant will take the pot and say this pot is sincere it means sincere which means without wax so when the word sincere is used it means there is no crack in you which we have filled with wax that's the vessel god wants to use and it is only the fire that will let us know what is inside. The fire reveals whether there is a vampire in there or not. Nobody knew. Paul never knew there was a vampire among the sticks. 
until it went into the fire. So God wants to raise leaders. God is, is, is looking for people. Look, anytime you put on the radio or you put on the telly and you hear of challenges, don't you think God is looking for people to solve that problem? The earth is the loss, not the devil. The earth is whose? The loss, not the devil. And God is looking for people who will solve problem on earth for him. And if we avail ourselves, I am telling you, God wants to do so much with us. There is a coming wealth transfer. There is a coming wealth transfer. And I believe that full gospel will qualify for some. Yes, there is a coming wealth transfer for the kingdom work. But God is looking for people who can carry the wealth. And God cannot put the wealth in wooden vessels. It needs to be in golden vessels. Vessels that have stood the test of time. Vessels that are not moved by the weather. You know, the difference between another, the, 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 for wood, when you expose wood to the atmosphere, you expose clay to the atmosphere, and you expose silver and gold to the atmosphere. Over a period of time, what happens to silver and gold and wood? Wood begins to what? Rot. It means it is as affected by external forces. But silver is not affected by external forces. Even if the silver begins to dim, you can shine it. But when the wood is rotting, you cannot... Is there a word? <laughs> you can't polish the rot off. A rotting wood is what? A rotting wood. So the question is, when, when you are exposed to the element of the earth, of the world, how are you affected? Do you come better or you get rotten? Do we allow the things of the world to affect us as children of God in our sphere? The wrong things they are doing in our office. The wrong things that are taking place in our environment. When we go back, do we do the same thing like they do? Then there is no need for a change. Let it continue like that. But if we can understand this principle, I believe that God will use us for mighty works. From today, pray and ask the Holy Spirit. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Be sincere like David. The day that David, that David found out that mm, I am losing my golden touch when I fornicated with Bathsheba, he was sincere. He never covered himself with wax. But Saul, when he found himself losing his edge, he said the prophet should come and cover him as if nothing is wrong. That was the difference. My prayer is that may the Holy Spirit work on us. That as we live here, we will live here as honest people. Like we will be naked before him. We will be like David saying to the Lord, Sex through me, O God. Lord, say through me, I, I can't do it myself, Lord. Because it's only the Holy Spirit that transforms us. He's, he's the one who helps us. He's there. He's been given for that purpose. But He cannot help you if you are not honest to Him. If you pretend there is nothing wrong. If you are wood and you go and spray, you go and buy can coke, can, can uh, spray gold and spray the wood. And when we say, you say you are gold. But you know very well that it is what? It is wood. We, he can't help you. Except you scrap off all the wood. You alone can turn wood into gold. Do something with me, Lord. Lord, work on me. And I believe if you present yourself to the Lord like that, as we leave this camp, the world will see that you've come before God. God bless you.